which works first. <laughs> okay, good. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming and attending the, uh, the uh, talk today and the lecture today. Um, uh, Harris said that I'm going to be giving you everything about Islam <laughs> in 20 minutes. I'll try my best, but uh, I, might, I am going to go over the basics of it at least. Uh, God willing, I'll go from the basics of what Islam actually is. Uh, before I do that, as a show of hands, if, if no one minds, of course, um, can I just get a show of the audience? Who, who do we have in the audience today? Do we have anyone who believes in God? Put your hand up if you believe in God. Okay. Okay, so we have everyone. Yourself? Yeah, good. Um, um, Christians in the audience? Okay, good. So uh, you guys are all that. In that all right, good. Uh, Muslims? Okay, any other faith? All right, so we really should have done a talk on Christianity and Islam instead. But uh, I'll try and see what I can cover in Shah Insha Allah God will. Okay, so um, as I said, I'm going to go cover some of the basics of Islam itself. So I'm going to start with, well, what's in a name? What is in a name? As uh, Shakespeare once said. Um, really, when we look at Islam itself, what's important is for us to understand what does Islam mean and look at the definition of this word. Now, if I ask the question, what does Islam mean? Does anyone know? Okay, anyone else? Peace? Submission. Okay, good. Um, Islam does mean, pe uh, well, more submission and surrender. But first of all, let me tell you what Islam isn't. So we say that Islam isn't named after a person. For example, Christianity is named after Jesus Christ. May God peace and blessings be upon him. Or you get Buddhism named after Buddha. Or even Marxism named after Karl Marx. Um, so we don't name Islam after a person. We are not Mohammedans. As some may call us, but we're not classed as Mohammedans. We wouldn't call ourselves or classify ourselves as Mohammedans. We also say that Islam is not named after a certain place. So Islam is not, so for example, Judaism after the name of the tribe of Judah. Or Hinduism after the tribe in Hind or that area in, in Hind in India. So we were not, we're not named after a, as I said, after a person or a place. Um, rather, Islam is the name that's given directly by God Almighty. And we say that is revealed in the Qur'an itself. So the name itself, God has given this name or this religion in the Qur'an itself. As, as God says in chapter 5 verse 3. This day I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and I've chosen for you Islam as your religion. So that name, Islam, comes from that particular... The name Islam comes from God himself, or that it's revealed in the scripture itself. Not named after a person or place or anything else like that. And as you rightly said, my friend, Islam does mean to submit or to surrender. Now, that's an interesting thing because in, in reality, we can submit or surrender to anything. For example, as an individual, I could submit to money. I could submit and surrender myself to um, idols or my parents or my spouse. Um, we can submit ourselves to our desires, which many people do. They submit themselves to their desires. Whereas we as Muslims, we say... Our submission belongs to Allah alone, to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. And we believe that this is the teachings of all the prophets and the messengers. They all taught this message. And this is what our, our Quran tells us in chapter 16, verse 36. For we are surely sent amongst every people a prophet, every nation was revealed with the command, worship God alone and avoid false gods. And that's the simple message of Islam. Now, um, on top of that, an example that Allah gives us in the Quran, He says that Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but was an upright Muslim. In the sense that if you look at the religion of what Abraham taught, Abraham didn't teach this religion called Judaism. In fact, that name obviously came after him from the tribe of Judah, from Jacob. Um, similarly, Christianity came after him. Um, from Jesus Christ, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. So Abraham himself, what did he teach? What did he call people to do? He didn't say, oh, come to Judaism or oh, come to Christianity. He said, come to worship and submit yourself to God alone. Similarly, if we look at the example of Moses, we believe that Moses didn't teach this religion called Judaism. He simply said, 
all my people, come worship God alone, submit to God alone. Similarly, as Muslims, we would say, Jesus Christ, may God's peace and blessing upon him, said the same thing. He called people to worship and submit themselves to the Creator alone, and not worship false gods. So we believe that all the prophets and messengers taught this religion of worshipping God alone and submitting themselves to God alone. I.e., they all taught this religion called Islam. Now, that's an interesting thing because while we say that Islam itself um, is the religion of all the prophets and messengers, we as Muslims do believe that it was completed, as the verse previously verse um, showed, it was completed with the Prophet Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. Okay, so one of the most central themes of our faith, and if we're talking about the basics of Islam, the most central theme of our religion is this belief in the existence and oneness of a creator. Who we as Muslims in the Arabic, we would call Allah. If you look at the Aramaic, whether it's Allah, whether it's Elohim, uh, very similar words. But this idea that we believe in, a one, in, in one creator. And we come to a rational, logical conclusion, and I'm sure all of us here would come to a rational, as, as theists, as believers in God, come to a rational, logical conclusion that there is a creator of this universe. Um, and that this, if you look at the universe itself, it points to a creator. It points to someone who brought it into existence. Okay? Um, we would say that is Allah. Now, it's interesting, it's important that we understand who or what Allah is. Um, and this is very important because when we say we are strict, we, when we as Muslims say we are monotheistic, we are strictly monotheistic. We don't play around with that term at all. It's a very, very, it's a, it's a very strict understanding of being of belief in one God. So in the in the 112th chapter of the Quran, it gives us our concept of who Allah is. And so Allah says in the Quran. <laughs> Say he is Allah, the one and the only. He is unique. He is uniquely one. Um, Allah, the self-sufficient, meaning he doesn't need anything or anyone. So like for example, my friend, my brother, when you are hungry, what do you do? Uh, you eat, right? He's going to say, I'm just, I just stop wailing and crying. <laughs> you eat food, right? When you're thirsty, my friend, what do you do? Drink water, not Coca-Cola? Yeah. Just water, strictly water, good. When you're tired, Richard, what do you do? I sleep. Yeah, you definitely sleep. <laughs> Students, yeah, student life, right? We do, we do, we do a worldly, as worldly individuals, as creation, we are dependent on certain things. Whereas we say that Allah, the creator, is self-sufficient, meaning he doesn't need anything or anyone. We also say about Allah is that he doesn't give birth, nor was he born. So we as Muslims believe that God does not have a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, a board of directors, a child, a pet, any pets. We don't say he has anyone basically that he should shares divinity with. Now I know our Christian brothers and sisters may have we have a difference in opinion on that a little bit, whether it's Jesus being son of God or God. But from our perspective as Muslims, we believe that God doesn't share divinity with anyone or anything. And we also say about the Creator, we also say about Allah is that Allah is not like anything. And what that means is, I'll give you an example. Um, we, as most, we as human beings, we see and we hear. And we also know that God sees and God hears everything. But our seeing and our hearing is not like the Creator's. Um, for example, we can't see what's going on outside of this room. We can't hear what's going on outside of this room. Whereas we believe that Allah sees and hears all things. Now, if you'll notice that I'm using the term Allah, okay, and I haven't really used the term God much. And the reason why I don't like to use the term God as much is because I think when we use the term God, certain people have a connotation or a picture in their head of an old man with a long white beard sitting on a chair, right? That's a lot of the, a lot of the times you have this image of that's, that's who God is. Whereas Muslims, we don't have that image of God. So, like when we say that we, God is not like anything, that's exactly what we mean. We don't put a picture to God. We don't make, make him out to be a human being, okay? Or definitely not an old man, old man with a white beard. Um, so yeah, that is ultimately our belief in the Creator. This fundamental belief, this monotheistic, the very strict monotheistic belief of a Creator, a supreme being who has knowledge of all things, is independent and eternal, and does not share divinity with anyone. So the question then I would come to, or the question that may arise from it as well, 
what's our purpose? What does Allah want from us? Why are we here? Okay, and the best way I could describe it was with that. Okay? I know that looks a bit weird, but I'll, I'll explain to you in a worldly example. And the way I'll explain what our purpose is, is, is let me give you that worldly example. Now, that's a 50 pound note, okay? And if I gave you a 50 pound note, Harris, what would you say to me? <laughs> Why are you giving me this 50 pound note? But you would, right? Even if I gave you five, I'm not going to. I'm not going to give any of you anything, money. But you would, right? You'd show some sort of an element of gratitude. And we do that as human beings all the time with each other. We have an element of gratitude with each other all the time. We have, as a human experience, we, we are thankful to each other all the time. So we point our gratitude to each other because when we do something for each other, it's we're grateful. So, this is my personal opinion. I start to reflect on this and I think, well, what about the one who gave me my eyes? What about the one who gave me my hands, my faculty of reason, my parents, my children? I have three children. Um, all the things that I hold dear to my heart, who gave me those things? And I have to point that gratitude somewhere. So as a Muslim, I believe that's my purpose in life, to recognize the Creator exists, and ultimately show gratitude to the Creator for all the things that the Creator has given me, or that Allah has given me. And I believe that's our purpose in life. As Allah tells us in the Qur'an, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've only created the jinn, which is another uh, uh, being, um, and, the human being and, the, and human beings, humankind, to worship me. That ultimately, brothers and sisters, in faith, Brothers and sisters in humanity, uh, brothers and sisters that believe in Jesus Christ, may God's peace and blessing be upon him. That ultimately is our purpose in life. As a Muslim, that's what we are told our purpose in life is. That we have been created to worship Allah. Now, it's important that I to explain this term worship because sometimes people have this idea that worship simply means ritual prayer. It doesn't. Worship is much more comprehensive than that. And one of the scholars explained worship to be anything that God loves and is pleased with, both inward and outward, in actions and statements. So me being kind to my parents, for example, is worship. Me removing something harmful from the road is worship. Me showing love to my neighbors is worship. Me showing love to animals is worship. And this is what I believe Islam is all about. Islam is all about this idea of rights, okay? That we fulfill the rights of one another. So as a non-Muslim, for example, I fulfill your rights. I don't curse you when you walk down the street. I don't come try and force Islam upon you. Yeah, because that's your right. Allah tells us that's your right. Yeah, similarly, I have rights over you, you have rights over me. My Muslim brothers and sisters, they have rights over me and I have rights over them. So when I greet them or when I see them, I greet them with the Islamic greeting, Assalamu Alaikum. Don't worry, it's not any sort of spell or anything. It just simply means, may God's peace and blessings be upon you. Yeah? So they have a right over me and I have a right over them. If they are ill, I should visit them. If they die, um, I follow their funeral, I console their family and give my condolences to their family and I, and I follow their funeral procession. That's their right upon me. Or well, that's my right upon them and their right upon me. We also believe that, for example, our parents have rights over us. Our children have rights over us. Allah tells us that even animals have rights over us and the earth has rights over us. Yet Allah tells us that the greatest right is God's right. So we, we can put it into two things. In Arabic it's called Hukuk Allah wa Hukuk Al-Ibad, which is the rights of the creation and the rights of the creator. And so we fulfill the rights of one another as creation. Yet the greatest right is the right of Allah. And that right is that we worship Him alone. And we single Him out as the being that is worthy of all worship. Okay. So, yeah, that's ultimately what, I, as what we as Muslims we believe from that perspective. And so, we as Muslims believe that in order for us to do that, in order for us to really show or, or worship the Creator, it's the reason why He sends His prophets and messengers. So, throughout time, God has sent His prophets and messengers and Scripture in order for us to know how to worship Him or how to show gratitude to Him. Because unfortunately, brothers and sisters, there are people out there that will that are willing to take a plane and blow it up into a building, and that's their warped understanding and way of saying, "Well, I'm showing thanks to the Creator." There are also other warped, well, there are other individuals who may roll up a joint, smoke it, 
and say, that's my way of showing thanks to the Creator. Whereas we say, no, if we want to show thanks to the Creator, let's do it how the Creator has told us to, which is, as I said, the reason for prophets and messengers being sent, to tell us to show how to show gratitude to God, to understand our purpose in life, to live our lives according to how Allah wants us to live our lives. And so this is why we as Muslims, we believe in the prophets and messengers. And we also believe the final prophet, Muhammad, was sent, and the Holy Quran was sent as a guidance for us on how we live our lives and how we come closer to the Creator, how we have a true relationship with Allah Almighty. And with that, brothers and sisters, I'm going to end my talk.